Good morning from Northern Alberta, Canada. I'm Christy. Welcome. In today's video, we are going to be marinating a roast together. I'm trying this Pepsi marinade that a friend had mentioned um, and giving it a shot. We're also going to be making some buns together as well as I'm sharing with you my ooey gooey sticky bun recipe, which is my family's favorite. And it was created by me to use some different ingredients that may not be in your traditional um, sticky bun recipe, but um, you can also substitute to be more traditional. So there's that. And we're gonna share that together. We're gonna to dehydrate some oranges for Christmas decorations. And other than that, um, we're gonna go for a little stroll. I'll show you my backyard and how beautiful it is this morning. I live where the air hurts my face. That's why. let's get making some buns and sticky buns this morning. I'm adding three cups of warm water. Alternatively, you could use 50-50 uh, milk and water or cream and water, whatever you have on hand. To that, I am adding four tablespoons of sugar, and then I'm giving it a good mix to sort of dissolve it. Then I'm adding six teaspoons of yeast. This is the rapid or quick rise um, yeast that I'm particularly using, but um, you would just have to use what you have and adjust accordingly to the instructions. To this, I'm just giving it a little bit of a stir and I'm adding one half of a cup of melted butter that it has been cooled down. So um, I don't have a microwave, so I just melt my butter on the stove. And while I'm cracking these two eggs that I'll be whisking up and adding, um, I let it sit to the side and cool off. Um, it doesn't take long for butter to, to cool, but you never want to pour in hot butter into the eggs or the yeast right off the bat. So I did add the eggs. The eggs are warm because they uh, just come from the chicken coop and they were just laid. So they're still warm. And I'm adding my melted butter into there very, very slowly because it's still quite, quite warm. I don't want to like cook the eggs or do anything to the yeast. So this is the guessing game when it comes to uh, flour. So what I like to do is I add about eight cups or sorry, five cups off the bat of, of flour. And then I add um, my salt. So I add um, two, I think it's two, te yeah, two teaspoons of salt on top of my flour. And then I kind of blend it in. Um, together and then I mix start mixing by hand you could do this in a mixer I don't use a mixer I've only ever made bread by hand I've never actually used a 
uh, a bread machine or, or sorry, a mic, like a mixing dough hook or anything in a in a machine. So I just I've only ever made bread by hand. Um, so that's just what I what I do. This is how I do it. But you could certainly do this in a bread machine or in a mixer. I'm certain it's it usually turns out. Basically what I do is I add, I add my initial five cups of flour of regular all-purpose flour and then what I do is I just add cup by cup as I need it. Usually it's between eight cups and ten cups of flour total is what I need to use. It all depends on the type of flour you're using and how, um, how it hydrates and whatnot. Sometimes I, you know, I could use the same brand of flour and sometimes I'll use six cup or eight cups and sometimes I'll end up using 10. It just, it, it's all depends on the flour. So, um, you just kind of have to eyeball it. And the more you do this, the easier it becomes. It's really not complicated. Um, it's quite a simple skill and you'll figure it out. If you're new to this, don't be discouraged. Then, uh, so what I do is I turn it out on some on a, the floured counter. I had disinfected and cleaned my countertops. They're all clean. And so what I do is I knead this. And I will work this dough for 10 to 15 minutes by hand. So put on your favorite podcast or your YouTube. I usually watch Becky from Acre Homestead. Or I do watch um, my birthday buddy, actually. Uh, this week, it's our birthdays. We have the same. We have a birthday on the same day, which is um, Jessica at um, Roots and Refuge. The name of their YouTube channel and farm is uh, Roots and Refuge. We share the same birthday, so... Um, I usually turn on a podcast or a YouTube and I just need and watch my favorite people on, on YouTube and away we go. So if you're going to eat these sticky buns, you probably want to get your workout now anyways, instead of using the stand mixer, just, just warning. <laughs> Once you have one, you might want to, so uh, get your workout in. Anyway, I just keep working it and keep working it. What I want is to happen is I want to activate the the glutens in the dough in the in the flour and so I just keep on working and working keep add flour as I need it and slowly add it in and get it nice and hydrated this dough is really easy to work with and it's quite it's quite fun um, it's not one of those really hard doughs so what I like to do now, I don't know if this is proper. This is just how I know it's going to turn out well. When I push on it and make it, if it makes an indent and it holds that indent, I keep working it. What I want it to do is I want it to rebound instantly. So when I poke it, I want it to like bounce really back. I call it like a bounce test. See, it poke, I poked it and it made these little indents and it stayed. I just want to keep working it and then test it to see... Um, if like when it's at that point where it rebounds really, really quickly and then I let it rest at that point, see, it didn't do it. So I'm going to let it rest. So I'm putting some oil, um, olive oil in the bottom of my stainless steel bowl that I already had this dough in and I'm just rubbing the top of it so it doesn't dry out and I'm just going to cover it and put it in a warm place. Now we're going to have some fun making this roast beef. Um, <laughs> this is really nice meat. I bought this, um, I bought a box of roasts from one of our local farms here. I've purchased whole beefs, have beefs, and boxes of meat from this farm. They are amazing. It's Jackknife Creek. If you're local, please check them out. They do go to local markets, um, and they have a great website, and they're very helpful. So make sure you check them out if you want some delicious beef. So what I'm doing is I am sprinkling, pe I sprinkle pepper, and this was uh, freeze-dried garlic, and I'm adding dehydrated garlic and like gra like the granulated garlic and granulated onion, some salt, and this is some dry mustard, and I'm just kind of slathering it on. I'm not doing any measurements. I'm winging it. And then the W sauce, I know there's plenty of grammar police probably here today, so I'm just going to say the W sauce because I don't want to get into it with you <laughs> or anybody. Um, and then I'm going to add some coconut aminos to the top and some chili peppers, just a sprinkle. 
And then the fun part, I have one of those mini bottles of Pepsi. Um, you could use any cola or Dr. Pepper. Um, you could probably use beer. Whatever you, whatever you decide, you can do that. Um, and I just pour that over the top, only half of the bottle. I'm only, because I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to roll this roast over and then do all the same seasonings again um, to it and just, you know, repeat, repeat step one or side one again. the bread down since it actually rose to double its size and we're just gently pushing out pushing it down to get out all these air pockets and we're going to cover it again and let it rest until it doubles in size again so what we're going to do is we're going to put this roast in a slow in the slow cooker i happen to have a quick cooker slash slow cooker because i end up slow cooking, like slow roasting this roast all day. And then before supper, I actually pressure cooked it for half an hour. Um, and I just, I poured everything right on in there. I added all of the marinade and everything. And this, I put it on um, early in the morning, let it go for six hours. And then I, the last, that last half an hour, I ended up just putting it on the pressure cooker setting for half an hour. So let's get some Christmas decorations started. I love this time of the year for getting creative. And so I have these oranges that they're not the greatest and I don't want them to go to waste. So I decided to slice them and dehydrate them because I need some little ornaments on a couple of my tr Christmas trees since I'm hosting this year. I wanted to add something fun and new without spending any money. So I decided I'm going to make some little orange um, Christmas decorations. I've seen lots of different channels have been working on making these this year. They seem to kind of be the fun thing that everybody's doing. So why not? They last a long time. I can keep them for years over, so it's worth the effort, and I don't have to waste my oranges. So it's pretty simple. I just did one tray. Um, I don't know if freeze drying, I mean, freeze drying probably would work for this, but I just turned them on the high setting and let them go all day. So let's check on our bread again. Look at that. It's ready to go. Um, so basically I'm dividing it into two. We're going to be having beef on a bun um, or roast beef sandwiches, I guess. And I'm also going to be making smokies this week. So I'm going to make some like sausage buns as well as the rest of the dough I'm going to be using for making our sticky buns. So this is just, I'm dividing it roughly. I have no I'm, I'm learning myself how to make sausage rolls or like sausage buns. Um, they're not pretty, but hey, they do the job. So that's all that matters. And I'm using stoneware. The stoneware does not brown the bottom, which some people prefer that. It makes the bottoms really stay soft. Um, so I am, for what I'm doing this time, I, I decided to use the stoneware instead of the sheet pant for the buns. And so basically I, sh I let them rise with covered. I made some brown sugar um, in case you were wondering what that was. I added some molasses to brown sugar because I didn't have any brown sugar and uh, for our rolls. So we're going to get started on this. I kind of press it out into a rectangle shape and roll it out to about one quarter inch thickness and try to be as even as possible. This dough is so nice to work with. It's just 
really a nice, nice dough. So to my rolled out dough, I'm adding one third of a cup of melted butter. Um, don't make a mess like I did. I just slopped that all over my counters. Uh, <laughs> pay attention to what you're doing and don't be like me. Um, so anyways, I'm just spreading this all out evenly so it's all coated in butter. And then I'm just going to add the brown sugar that we just made on top. I like the brown sugar to be darker. I prefer mixing my own really dark brown sugar for this recipe for whatever reason that that molasses, that fresh um, sugary like blend when you do it up fresh for this recipe, it just, there's something about it you can really tell. Um, so I would make like a dark brown sugar for this recipe even if I had brown sugar on the pantry sh shelf. Uh, just kind of so you know, it's one of my secrets to making this recipe really pop. Um, it's good. So anyway, that's what I do. Now I'm going to add a ton. I mean, I want I want this whole thing covered in cinnamon. Like I do not want to see the brown sugar. I want it to be, well, not like that thick, but you know, like dusted, like a fresh snow um, coated with the cinnamon. We don't skimp on cinnamon in this house. Everyone really likes it. So I'm just rolling it up. And then once we get it rolled up, we're going to work on the sticky part of this recipe, which is going to be controversial to some of you. And if you don't like raisins, there's options. Okay. There's options. So to my pan, I'm adding a third of a cup of butter and I'm going to scoop out the cream of this co canned coconut milk. Not the, uh, not the liquid part, just the, th the hard solidified coconut cream that is um, separated from the actual milk itself. So I'm just adding all that cream in there and then I'm adding raisins. Here's your options. You could add toasted pecans or candy, candy pecans instead of raisins, or you can just omit that completely and add a little bit of sugar. Um, then I added one tablespoon of both maple extract and also vanilla extract, one tablespoon of each. And so this is a mapley, gooey kind of real. It's a, it's really really a nice flavor. You could, you know, instead if instead of using raisins, like I said, you could use use nuts or whatnot. So how I do this is I bring it to a boil, and when I use nuts, I can tell because it's chain or when I use raisins, it changes color, and it gets a little bit thicker. Like you can just tell that it's changed consistency a little bit. It's kind of like this caramely brown color. Um, so I would say just boil it for like a minute or two, probably about two minutes. And then I would pour that into the bottom of your baking dish and spread it all out. I like to use the raisins to boil the raisins in here because if you have old ones, it plumps them up and makes them nice and juicy and it extracts the sweetness. So I don't have to add any sugar to the stickiness of the, like the sticky part of this bun or ice them. This is like omitting your icing on cinnamon buns. So yeah, I just slice it. It's easy. It, it, I find it easier to use a serrated knife. I'm using a steak knife because my bread knife was MIA. So um, I just do my little, um, cut, I cut these into pieces and there we go. We just set them right on in there. Now we're going to cover them and let them rise for until they're like double in size. Now I pulled out the buns that I had in the oven and I'm just putting butter over top of them um, just so that the tops and the bottoms match because this is a stoneware pan I find that when the bottom is really soft and the top gets kind of crusty or like hard it just it annoys me so I like to brush them with butter then it just softens the top part a little bit and then it doesn't annoy me so badly so our cinnamon buns are ready to go in I do have these other buns in the oven right now so I'm going to pull them out and we'll pop these cinnamon buns or sticky buns sorry sticky buns into my really filthy dirty oven and we're gonna bake those at 375 for 20 minutes my oven runs hot so you might have to go 25 and ta-da
<laughs> we're going to flip these out. As soon as they come out of the oven, you put your oven mitts on and try not to make a mess or spill this on yourself because it will burn <laughs> and you flip it over and um, hopefully with any luck, nothing gets stuck. But, you know, Chaz stands there with a spoon usually waiting for things not to come out of the pan because he can. his little sniffer gets him in trouble sometimes. He can smell these things from miles away. And um, I had a little bit of stickage there, but they popped off the pan really easily. It's slippery too. It, you, I find these like these mitts, these oven mitts that are like silicone, they work really good for this. So the taste test portion of this, I like this recipe because you don't have to do cream cheese. You can make this uh, dairy free if you wanted to use margarine and you know stuff like that instead. You don't have to use raisins. You can use whatever you want. Let's see what the professional food taster says. You want to try it? Yeah. It's good. How many chow stars does that get? Definitely more than 10. Pardon? Definitely more than 10. More than 10? Mm-hmm. Well, you gave the pork chops a 12 the other day. Mm. 13 then. A 13? <laughs> cool. Good luck with your homework. Thank you. So while Chaz was literally licking his fingers and his plates, we decided to check on the oranges and they are ready to thread. So um, some of them are. I let some of these get too dry. And when they get super dry, they're hard to poke through because they break. So I like to, I tried using a hole punch and it did work for some of them. I don't recommend it. I would just stab it with like a knife. <laughs> that worked the best for me. hanging out with me today i appreciate you being here and be sure if you enjoyed today's content to like and subscribe we'll see you next time bye for now